Uh, okay, so I thought I'd do um, a little tutorial on P5.js. Um, I use it a lot. You can go to my web page, my website to see some examples of that. Um, uh, and I also teach it as well. And one of the nice things I like to do when I'm teaching it is kind of a, a beginner's kind of tutorial. Um, is to create a kind of a simple catching game and so have kind of an object falling from the sky and then have another object that you can move to then catch it. So we're just going to draw a circle that comes down, kind of a rectangle at the bottom to then catch it. And then um, you can kind of make it more difficult every time you catch it, increase the speed of the falling object or war, um, have a score-based system and things like that. So there's many ways you can kind of customise it and make it much uh, much cooler and less basic. Um, so let's get started with that. Um, what I want to do first off is just increase the canvas size. So I'm going to say 800 by 800 and press play. And that's going to give me an 800 by 800 pixel side canvas. Now, I want to draw a circle. And a circle takes an X position, a Y position, and uh, a size, which is its diameter. But because we want those values to change over time, we want to create variables for them. So I'm going to say uh, xpos. I'm going to create a variable called xpos. And I'm going to make that at 400. So that is halfway of the screen because this is 0, this is 800. So 400 is going to be right bang in the middle. And then I'm going to say ypos is 0. Um, I'm going to be consistent with my camel case. There we go. Um, ypos is 0. So that's right at the top. Okay. And then I'm going to draw my circle. And I'm going to use xpos. Uh, X pos. I'm going to use Y pos, and I'm going to say a size of 100. And then if I press play, we're going to get a, we're going to it's going to look like a semicircle. The reason being because the circle draws from its center point, so its center point is uh, is where we draw it from, and its center point is currently at this uh, zero um, zero on the Y axis. Okay, so this is the y-axis and this is the zero here. So that's why we get what seemingly looks like a semicircle. It's actually drawing the full circle. It's just that half of it is visible and the other half is not visible off the top. Um, okay, so what we want to do, I'm just going to make it look a bit nicer. So I'm going to say no stroke, um, camel case. There we go, no stroke, which is going to get rid of the black line. And then I'm going to use a fill command to color it. And I'm going to say no on the red. Uh, no on the green, and I'm going to make that blue. There we go. So if I press play now, we're going to have this blue, uh, this circle, this blue circle there. Uh, okay, so first thing I want to make the uh, the circle fall down. Uh, so I need to um, I need to change its y position over time. So at the minute it's zero, and so what I want to do is increase it. So I could do something cumulatively. So I could do something like this plus equals uh, one. And so that what that does is y position is zero. What is stored in y position? Well, it's zero. We're going to add one to it. The result of that, which is going to be one on the first pass of the loop, we're going to store that back into y position. Then the next part of the loop, y position, well, it's one because we've plus one to it. We're going to plus one to it again, store it back into the y position. It's two. So we get this cumulative um, addition happening here. If I press play, we'll get this ball slowly moving down, uh, down the side, uh, down the um, the center of the uh, the screen, and I can change that. I can make that five, for example, and then I can see that kind of moving faster because we're moving each time this the draw loop round the draw loop runs round. We're adding five to it cumulatively. Now it's fallen off the page. It's still drawing it, it's just that our sketch is only of 800 and 800 pixels, our canvas. So actually it's it's going beyond that now, it's falling way beyond that. So what we want to do is we want to set a condition up that says when it reaches the bottom, let's redraw it. And actually we're not, re we're not redrawing it, all we're doing is actually moving it. The circle is still being drawn at this moment in time, we're just going to move it to the top. So this is a nice time to add a little condition here to do that. So we're going to use an if condition. We're going to have some brackets. Um, and then in the if condition, we're going to say if uh, y pos is greater than height. So if it's greater than the height of the screen, then we uh, can trigger something. And then we use the squiggly brackets to do the result of that, con of that condition being met. And then we want to say y pos, 
by pos is zero. So we're going to make it zero. So we're going to move it on the y coordinate. So if I press play um, up here, there we go, it comes down. Once it gets to what height, there we go, it redraws, uh, it doesn't redraw, it moves it, sorry, moves it to the top. Um, and the X position hasn't changed at this moment in time, so it's going to redraw it in that X position. But we want to make it a little bit more interesting. So in that same condition, uh, what we can do uh, is we can uh, make X position different. So let's say X position is equal to random. So we're going to use the random and we're going to select a random number from its width. And width is whatever we we have here is our canvas size. So width is just um, uh, now uh, a variable that is uh, stores how uh, sorry x <laughs> that's the that's the height uh, which is the x there. It's just as height is this value here. Okay, so if I press play now, as it drops, it should we should kind of see half of it fall off the screen, and then it rematerializes, gets moved. Um, up to the top of the screen of a different X position, um, which is cool. Uh, okay, cool. So let's now have an object that we're going to use to catch it. And for that, we're going to draw just a simple rectangle. Now, a rectangle takes an X position, a Y position, and then it also takes a width and a height. Now, I am going to use mouse X, mouse X, x as its x position i'm just going to set a consistent value for y so it's just moving at the bottom of the screen i'm going to say 700 for that it's width let's make that 200 and it's a uh, height of 50 i think that should kind of work and if i press play now brilliant i've got this and you notice i can move there we go i can move this along which is quite nice now you can see um, the uh, mouse pointer is actually always in the top left hand corner of the rectangle and that's because the rectangle is drawn from the top left hand corner um, we might want it to be drawn from its center point which might make more obvious so what we can do is down here I'm gonna say rect mode uh, MOD and then I'm gonna say center and that's going to redraw it. Now, if I redraw it, you see my mouse pointer is now in the middle of the shape. And that's because we're drawing the X position and Y position is always in the middle of the shape. Now, that will actually become handy when we are dealing with interaction between these two objects. So for us to kind of make the assumption that we have caught the ball. So I've caught the ball in that instance. What we want to be doing is we want to be finding out the coordinates of the paddle that we've created, the coordinates of the circle, and um, work out whether they come into contact. Now, the easiest way to do that is just to measure the distance. We've got a coordinate for the paddle. We've got a coordinate for the circle. We can measure the distance between the two points and then have a condition that says when they become within a certain threshold, we can assume they have been, that their ball has been caught and then trigger something, so change something. Um, and so to do that, if you're into maths, we can use trigonometry, but um, we can use a very simple function in, um, in uh, JavaScript, um, in P5, called uh, dist, uh, which is measures the distance. So I can say dist, and a dist measures the distance between a pair of coordinates. So the first pair is the x pos and y pos. So that's going to be my circle. And then the second is going to be mouse x and 700, because that's my arbitrary value that I set. Now I want to make this a bit of a condition. So I want to say something like if, open my brackets, if the distance between the circle and the rectangle becomes less than uh, 50, 50, why I've chosen 50 is that is half the size of this. So it's the diameter uh, divided by two, which gets me the radius. Um, so you'll get the edge of the circle touching rather than the kind of the circle seeping into the, um, seeping into the paddle. 
Uh, if that condition is met, then what I want you to do is move y pos and make the y pos zero. So now, if I let it drop, the circle drop, we're going to move it to the top. And then now if I do this and measure the distance, we can assume that it's been caught and then we can redraw it at the top, which is quite nice. And this is ultimately, though, quite a boring game, really, because um, it just does this. Um, what I also want to do in this moment is, like I've done before, is reset the X position as well, right? So I want to say X pos equals random width, like this. So now when the ball is caught, it will also uh, move it randomly along the X axis. Now, I didn't really do that. A huge jump there. There we go, but that's cool, right? Uh, this is not much of a challenge because the speed of the f of the of it falling remains the same. Its velocity remains the same. So let's make this a little bit more challenging. Instead of just having this arbitrary plus equals five here, I'm going to make a variable called speed. Um, speed, and I'm going to make speed just five to start off with because that's our starting speed. Okay. Um, once we caught it. So we catch it here. This is the catching condition. I also want to make speed increase. So I want to say speed plus equals uh, one. So we'll make it one in, in uh, we'll increase the velocity, um, the speed of it by one each time. So if I press play now, let me catch it. It should kind of increase in speed. Okay, let me catch it again. It should increase in speed again. Yeah, it's quite, gradual but it is increasing in speed okay let's make it a little bit more dramatic let's kind of go like let's increase by five for example so if i catch it now there we go there we go and get faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and faster and it's then it gets absolutely crazy <laughs> which is nuts um what we could do um, is we could have it in the, so this is the condition for when it's not been caught. So when it's dropped off the bottom, we can change X, we can change the speed there and say speed is minus equals 10. And then, uh, uh, not 10, sorry, five. So we can make it slower by five. So it increases when I catch it. So I've caught it now, increased in speed. There we go. It gets faster as I move along. Brilliant, yeah, yeah, yeah. And then if I miss it, miss it, and keep on missing it, you can see it slows down. Now there will be a moment where it will stop entirely after this one, because I think this is the slowest speed, um, and it will just stop at the top. So you can have some, you would want to put some sort of condition in to say if speed, uh, if minusing five to speed, take speed to zero, then make speed, you know, an amount like five. So you kind of want to check what speed is. Um, I won't do that, but what I will do is I'll just quite quickly make a score variable. So I'm going to make a score variable. I'm going to make that zero to start off with. And so we're just going to increase um, this when um, I catch it, which is in this condition here. So I can say score uh, uh, plus equals one. Um, and okay, let's draw that as well. So um, we can do that by using the text and text has what you want to draw. So I can say uh, score, which is the value, um, which is gonna be zero to start off with, start off with um, and an X and Y position. So I'm just gonna make that X on the 100 and Y on the 100, and then it should draw me a zero at the top. Now it's quite <laughs> quite small. I think I can use text size. Yes, text size, make that, I uh, think 50 might be massive, but let's try that. There you go, cool, and I can have zero there. And in fact, let's do something like uh, text. Let's move that along on the x-axis to 200, and let's have something like, let's actually say the word score. Um, ah, let's have actually say the word score like this, and let's have that like 100 on the X, 100 on the Y, 
and then we should have like there okay we'll move it along on the next to like 50 uh, press play there right brilliant there we go cool uh and so now when i catch the ball it should go up and then the speed increases as well and we can move along and we can keep on playing this lovely game like this and we can go crazy at how fast it is like this and we can see you know how many you can catch oh, nuts 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 crazy 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 okay um, i'm going to stop it there there is lots more you can do with this but this is kind of the simple simple starting point um what is nice maybe is to kind of cat uh, ca not only count how many times you catch it, but count how many times you drop it as well. So that's something to do. We mentioned about making sure the ball never stops. And so that's something you can do with a condition as well, to just to check um, when you take away from it. Um, you can change the shapes, you can change the colors. Um, you can even have uh, images imported in. Uh, so my students like to import images um, of things. Um, uh, you can find nice PNG files and stuff like that um, to do that. So there's there's lots of customization to be had on this, but this is you can see it's a really nice introductory uh, tutorial. We don't have to do a huge amount to it to seemingly pull off something quite uh, quite cool, and it's quite nice for the the students uh, to kind of uh, start playing with. Okay, so I'll leave it there, um, and we might look at some more P5 uh, later on. Okay.